Okay, so today we're going to be talking about record transferring. I have a, my own system for doing so. I mean, some people like to get it professionally transferred, and some people don't know how to do it. So here I am to teach you how I do it with my records. The first thing you're going to want to do is clean your albums. You may have the soap and water method like most people have used since the 1950s, or you could have the fancy spin clean of repi machines. Obviously, cleaning the record will give you a better sound because it gets rid of all the dirt, dust, fingerprints, and if it's a brand new record, it will get rid of whatever wax residue is left on the album from the pressing plant. Cleaning the record will eliminate the amount of pops you hear, even if you can remove those later on Audacity. It will be less work by eliminating a bunch of pops by cleaning the album. The best method is USB audio if your turntable is compatible. If your turntable or amplifier does not have a USB port, then plug an end-to-end -end cable from the headphone jack of your turntable or amplifier and put it into a microphone jack on your computer. This isn't a bad way to do it, but if you do it with a USB port like my turntable allows, you can listen to the record as it's transferring. This will help because while you can remove standard noise for the whole record, here you can write the exact locations of pop noises so you can specifically take them out later. You may think you can remember them, but trust me, there's always the chance that they can be missed by accident. Now, plug in, hit record on Audacity before hitting play on the album, dust the record off, and let it play. Mark any obnoxiously loud pop noises or any clicks you may not want to hear as you're listening to it. Great, the album's finished. Now, the rule of thumb, before you do anything else, save the file. I personally save it as a WAV file to the desktop. This helps because if you're later listening to the album and you hear a problem, you can go back and fix it. It also helps if you want to finish transferring the album later. First step, noise removal. On a record, there's always a few seconds before the music starts playing. It may be quiet amplifier noise, turntable noise, or record pops. Select this noise, then go to Effects on Audacity and click Noise Removal. Click Get Noise Profile. That tells Audacity that for the whole recording, you want that kind of noise quieted. Now. Unselect those few seconds of noise because you want this to be for the whole file. There won't be any need to select the entire recording because Audacity already knows to do that if nothing is highlighted. Now, click Noise Removal again, and in the Noise Reduction section, if it's really noisy, make sure that it's 7 decibels. If it's not so bad, make it 6 decibels. If you do it any higher than 9 or 10, it may affect the sound of the music itself. Click OK. Cool. Now that noise is gone, but there still may be some amplifier noise in the recording. Well, same process. Select it and repeat the steps. But this time you may want to do it at 3 or 4 decibels since it's not quite as loud. Hopefully you still have the sticky notes with the exact pop and click times. We're going to rectify those. It's best to find a good pop at the beginning of the album before it starts. If you happen to have a record that doesn't make a lot of noise at the beginning, that's good. But there's always the sound of the needle starting and the record side ending. The pop sound reference is best when it's on both sides of the speakers, so we're going to magnify and be specific in selecting. Go to Noise Removal and click Get Noise Profile. Now that Audacity knows what the pop sounds like, go find the time locations of them. Sometimes pops are easy to find and other times they're hidden. The easy to find ones look like spikes and are often easy to spot when the file is magnified. Here you can magnify the file and select the pop in a specific way where it can be isolated. Go to Noise Removal. If it's a really loud pop, you can set the noise reduction decibels to 2 or 3, but if it's quieter, 1 decibel is really all it needs. Click OK. Now listen to that little section to see if you can still hear the pop. If you can still hear it, you can click Undo, highlight it again if you need to be more specific, and repeat the process. Maybe even change the decibel removal. If you're successful, you won't be able to hear the pop. Other kinds of pops are hidden, so if you wrote the time section, you may have to listen over and over for that little section to find them because they may not be visible in Audacity right away. It may be best to put headphones on so you can hear it better. If you think you found it, it may be disguised as a drum transient. Try noise removal here. Now listen, did it work? Now, a little disclaimer. Some pops are just noise and will be hard to get rid of. Maybe even white noise sometimes that can only appear once on an album, so you'll have no reference point and won't be able to get rid of it. Other times, you could have a pop that may appear to go away, but you just won't be able to get rid of its sound. You can re-highlight it and change the decibel level, but sometimes pops are more stubborn than that, and sometimes they're there to stay. The only solutions are to re-clean your albums and re-transfer that song, or just accept the fate of the noise by remembering that it's a record transfer, and chances are there's still going to be some noise. Your transfer may not get rid of all noise, you may still have small pops and clicks here and there, but the noise you should want to focus on are the really obnoxious loud pops that are noticeable and may ruin the music. 
Now that the noise is gone, amplify your recording by going to effects. If allow clipping isn't selected, Audacity should be able to increase the whole thing by a few decibels. This is good for obvious reasons, partly so that way you don't have to turn your iPod up as loud, but it creates a solidarity between this transfer and your other record transfers because not all wax is pressed at the same volume. Plus, since the noise is removed, the recording may not have clipping and you can safely amplify without compressing. You could do that anyway, but if you're really picky, you could use your potential CD copy or Spotify as a reference point. For example, if you already have a CD and are planning to replace it with your vinyl rip, you can import the song from the CD into Audacity and sync the record transfer with it. This could be done by deleting however much silence from the beginning of the transfer before the music, then making sure it starts at the exact same time as the CD version. If you don't have the CD, you can go on YouTube or Spotify or wherever you may find the digital version of the song and use certain notes or drum sounds as a reference point. For example, you may have a song where a snare drum hits at exactly the 5 second mark, or if you're not insanely picky and still understand that it's your record transfer, you could guesstimate how much silence there is before the music and pick your point there. If you have songs that meld into each other, you could use the internet to find a source, find exactly where the next song begins like with a noise or something. An example of this would be Pink Floyd's Shine On. It melts right into Welcome to the Machine, and that's separated by a machine noise about two seconds into Welcome to the Machine. Another thing to note, sometimes if you have songs with a quiet intro, the noise may not show up prominently in Audacity, but you can still hear it. So you may need to use headphones to find exactly where the music starts. Otherwise, you might accidentally put a second of that song into the previous song file. If you have the song at the starting point you like, find the start point of the next song and highlight it from there to the beginning of your current song. If it helps, you can delete the current song and play the next to see if you like the way it begins. And if you do, you can just click the undo button and export your current song. If not, you can always adjust. Once you've found your stop and start points you like, make sure the selection you want for the song is highlighted, then click File, then click Export Selected. Choose whatever file format you like, name the song, and click OK. Guess what? you can add information to your song. This makes it easier to show up in iTunes or wherever you may have it. I personally always put taken from the vinyl LP in the comments section so that I'll know. Sometimes it's a bit obvious once listening to it, but if you burn it for your friends and they somehow see the comment not knowing that it's a vinyl rep, you may impress them. Now click OK to export the song. Repeat the process. What happens if you have a locking groove where a sound repeats? Well, go to the record itself and play it at that point. Find out how many times that sound repeats before the needle goes to the center. Now you know how to edit this out of Audacity by stopping at that number of times. I personally like to add the fade out effect to the last two seconds of the last song to make it seem more official. The record is over. After it's all exported, it may be a good idea to keep the files in a folder to keep them until you've listened to the music to make sure that it sounds good before you delete it from the folder. I usually import them into iTunes after it's all exported. It's a lot of process, but it's actually not a complicated system if you know what to do and what kind of sound you want out of your record transfer. Uh, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching.